great. Yeah. So obviously you are very busy and you know you have a lab, everything else, and you sort of split your time and you're oversubscribed because you know this is you know you're really good in what you do. Um, and how do you accommodate some of the patient that's far away? And I know that you've done some work on telemedicine and some of the program like MoSafe, maybe right. and you also published some studies recently. And why don't right. we talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, well, I guess the first thing with uh, uh, patients who are far away and patients with telemedicine. So right now, uh, the licensing requirements uh, for telemedicine are you're supposed to have a license in the state where the patient is seen, where the images are taken. So, mm -hmm. so technically not supposed to be treating a patient, you know, if they're not in the state where you are, or I suppose where they live. I, you know, I don't really stay closely, uh, you know, up on these things, but, but, um, so if people live far away, um, it, they, they fly in, you know, but, uh, but basically people, so I'm in, in New York, um, and New Jersey's right across the river and Molsafe is this telemedicine service, which we'll talk about. Um, and they have a lot of offices in New Jersey, of course, you know, cause you were in New Jersey. So, um, uh, so I have a license in New Jersey so I can read the, uh, images that are collected by Molsafe in New Jersey, in addition to the ones in New York. So but before we get into some yeah. of the like technical part, maybe, you know, um, because can can someone just take a picture with their iPhone or something like that? And, you know, what do you prefer? What are the limitations? Ah, yeah, ah, and yeah. Because, I mean, I think there's a lot of limitations, right? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, right. So um, the, the right, reason why I right. asked this question yeah. is that uh, maybe we can also, you know, teach the folks out there, like what to look for, how do they perceive when they take the pictures, right. how they send the picture to us. Right. With, for, right. for examination. Right. So a typical interaction that I have, and this is for established patients. I'm not going to do this for a new patient. Um, but if I have an established patient and, and they, they get concerned about a spot, they should, they send me an image, right? That happens all the time. And then the next message back to them is, sorry, your picture's out of focus. Hold your yeah. camera 18 inches away. Don't use the Zoom and just send it to us uh, that way. And, you know, have good lighting. So um, uh, that's kind of that, just the basics that you have to be a certain distance and, and people said 18 inches is a good distance away um, and then we can zoom it if we need to but that way at least it'll be in focus and you can kind of see enough of the surrounding skin so that would be a message to the listeners um, in terms of taking good quality pictures um, and then the uh, what kind of lighting yeah. I mean I you know I we went during yeah. COVID time people send this whole bunch of different pictures right and then we right. saw a lot more of their uh, kitchens and living yes kitchens. exactly <laughs> especially with the the video visits right yes you know? exactly right, exactly right, but like right. what light Lighting do you recommend? Um, you know, I think that uh, first of all, I don't do them by video. I, I they need to snap a picture and and yeah. send a picture, and yeah. and pretty good chance the cameras these days will correct the lighting as best as possible. But it certainly shouldn't be dark, shouldn't be in a shadow. But I would say just you know, uh, 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 just just kind of nothing. I don't think anything special. I think people just, you know, just make sure it's well lit, but it doesn't matter if it's from an angle, the top, the bottom, the side, you know, that's, that's, uh, I don't know how to even. Do you have any preference do between natural lighting versus like artificial fluorescent lighting? No, no. no. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, so that's basically people like sending me a picture through the, through the electronic medical record. So, um, and what happens sometimes is I can't tell. I was like, well, you know, you're going to need to come in because I just can't tell what that is with enough confidence. Or it's like, oh, that's clearly harmless. Don't worry. You know, just, just keep your routine follow-up. You don't have to come in special for it. So that's usually the extent of that kind of a, uh, of that kind of an interaction. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and then, you know, Molsafe is a whole nother thing because that's really total body telemedicine, if you will. So people go to a center um, and um, uh, they're examined by a specially trained nurse. And that's really critical because the, the nurse really, you know, um, uh, gets the training that they need to understand what to look for on the skin. Um, uh, they use the ABCDE criteria, um, uh, uh, but at a lower threshold. So I think their size is three millimeters instead of six millimeters, right? Because they want to capture anything that's a little bit atypical and pass it on to the the dermatologist who's reading the images. Um, and it's not just me from Allsafe. You know, they have other people reading in other states as well. Um, so, uh, 
uh, and, and I think then the other yeah, important yeah. thing is, I think the other important thing is, you know, to contrast the difference, right? And someone just sent you a clinical picture from the iPhone. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the most safe and they're capturing not only the full body, as right. well as the, 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 the clinical photo of individual lesion, but most importantly, yeah. the dermoscopy. The dermoscopy, right. So after they do this total body, then they, they have lesions that meet these criteria. I call them low threshold criteria. And they have a camera that, that has a special uh, uh, rod that keeps it at a fixed distance from the skin. So every single clinical picture is uniform in terms of the lighting and the distance and the focus. Um, so you get a high quality clinical image. And then of course the dermoscopy image, which mm -hmm. we talked about provides us with so much more information. And then all that all gets sent uh, to us um, uh, who are diagnosing and we can basically look at all the lesions uh, that they take the pictures of and uh, discern you know, make a recommendation if anything needs to be biopsied or followed up in three months or, or um, you know, sometimes we can't tell. And then we say, you got to go see your doctor for an in-person visit because of some technical reasons, uh, you know, that we can't really make a firm diagnosis. And then Molsafe basically sends the report to the patient and the referring doctor. Um, and uh, um, it's a really good way to provide care at a distance. Some patients come in, you know, the plastic surgeon wants to remove these three moles and, you know, they're purely benign lesions, no doubt about it. So it's nice to be able to say, well, you, it's benign. You don't have to have it off if you don't want to. Um, and uh, and that was very, that's been very satisfying because um, patients can be far away and yet I'm providing care. Yeah, I mean, I think you really need someone who take those excellent pictures. And yeah. I know that you recently published a study looking at, you know, in-clinic, like real-life visit versus, you know, the store-forward type of visit. Um, what did you guys find? Uh, if you're talking about the Molsafe uh, study that we compared, um, uh, is that the study you mean, where we compared what we found in Molsafe to... Um, uh, the uh, clinical exam. The clinical exam, right? So, so um, uh, yes, you, you told me you were going to ask me about this, so I have it up. It was about three hundred <laughs> lesions that we recommended for biopsy, and uh, uh, and it was about two hundred forty patients. But the bottom line was that um, we biopsy. So I was the person who it was, it was a review of my my recommendations um, and uh, for uniformity and uh, uh, the. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I diagnosed melanomas at an early stage. Um, uh, and um, uh, so there were early stage, you know, the, the, the median tumor thickness was 0.22 out of um, something like um, 23 melanomas uh, that we found in this, in these patients. Um, whereas the national average is about like 0.5 and we didn't over biopsy, you know, the, the, the number of benign things, we recommended for removal uh, was not substantially higher than what you would see in a dermatology practice. I think the uh, overall ratio was a, was 9.7 to 1, uh, and the number needed to biopsy was 13.4. And, um, you know, in, in, in a re recent paper, uh, that study from Pittsburgh, you know, the um, uh, dermatologist, you know, number needed to biopsy was um, 25 uh, to one and physician assistants, 39 to one. So, um, or a number needed to biopsy. So 25 for the germs and 39 for the physician assistants. And, uh, you know, we was at, um, uh, uh, what did I say? Thir 13, 13.4. 13 so we did well. We did well. So, I mean, um, I think for those one listening to this, those numbers that they yeah. were about to post is throwing out there, that means like, let's say one to 25, meaning that for every 25 lesions that was biopsy that showed benign, and the physician found one melanoma. And for the PAs, that was number is 39, you said? Yeah, 39, yeah. That means the PA have to buy up 39 to find one melanoma, right? So the goal is to decrease this benign to malignant ratio. That is, right. you want to get down as low as possible. That means so you don't over biopsy people. You don't turn people into this Swiss cheese. Basically. Right, and like at the same time, time not, not miss melanoma. not miss a melanoma right so, so we didn't miss, we didn't we didn't miss melanoma and uh um uh to our knowledge um well though we aren't really designed to check that because there's only things i recommended for yeah. re removal yeah. but uh yeah. it, we've done some other checking and you know but, uh, but the key here there is that you were actually able to find melanoma that's at the much thinner yes. thickness compared to the average right so exactly that itself shows that whatever you're doing your skills your expertise have allowed you to sort of detect melanoma at the earlier stage while minimizing the number of biopsies. Right, right. And 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 the, the take-home message wasn't uh 
uh, Dr. Polsky is good at what he does. The take home message was this is a platform that 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 Steve can do, you know, as well or better than me. So uh, it's really the message was the platform is a good platform for